Welcome back. My name is Lori Lalonde and I'm an Associate Consultant with Object Sharp Consulting. And I'm here today to talk to you about building Windows Phone apps for the new Windows Phone 8 platform. Now as a developer, you're wondering, where do I go to get started? Well, the first thing that you're going to need to do is head on over to the Windows Phone Developer Center at dev.windowsphone.com. For former Windows Phone 7 developers, you'll recognize this as the App Hub, which you used to access through the create.msdn.com URL. This now redirects to the new location, so be sure to bookmark it in your browser. Now at the Windows Phone Developer Center, you can download and install the SDK, and this is completely free. As well, you can browse online articles and view sample projects in order to learn how to use the APIs available in the new Windows Phone 8 platform. You'll also be able to come here to submit your apps for testing and certification and publication in the Windows Phone store. And this is a screenshot of what the Windows Phone Dev Center looks like. So as you can see, there's three prominent links in the bottom. You know, you can submit your app, that's where you can download the SDK and view samples. There are also other helpful links there for uh, tutorials that are updated regularly. You'll also no notice that you'll need to register for a Windows Phone developer account at some point. Now you do not need to do this just to download the SDK and start developing. But you will need to register for a Windows Phone developer account when it comes time for you to submit your apps for, te uh, for publication in the store. As well, if you want to test your apps on an actual device instead of the emulator, you will also need to register for this account. Now the cost for a Windows Phone Developer Center account is $99 for the year, but if you have an MSDN subscription or a DreamSpark subscription, this is all included as part of that package. Moving on. So Windows Phone 8 has a shared core. What does that even mean to you as a developer? Well, Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 both have share many of the same operating system level components. Whereas in Windows Phone 7 and Windows Mobile devices were powered on Windows CE, Windows Phone 8 now has replaced the Windows CE with a, with a Windows NT kernel, which is also powered on Windows 8. This means that the full power of desktop, um, desktop operating systems is now available on your phone. And now the phone can support um, multi-core processing as well. Other uh, OS components that are shared are networking, graphics support, file system, and multimedia. This makes hardware manufacturers very happy because they can work with the same driver model on both platforms. What it doesn't mean to you as a devel developer is you cannot just take your Windows Phone 8 app and run it on a Windows 8 um, OS. You, because you cannot code against the same APIs, um, you will need to extract a lot of the code that you need to use into portable class libraries, and there's only a small subset of APIs that you can use to share between Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8. So shared core doesn't mean that you can just run your apps pure um, as pure Windows Phone 8 apps on the Windows 8. There will be some modifications required so that you can extend your Windows Phone 8 app onto a Windows 8 platform. Let's look at some of the programming APIs that are available. So managed app, managed app developers can use the .NET API for Windows Phone as well as the new Windows Phone Runtime APIs that are available. And native code developers can also access the Windows Phone run Runtime APIs and they also have access to the Windows, Win32 and COM APIs. So as you can see, you can continue developing the same type of apps that you've developed in Windows Phone 7, both managed apps and XNA related apps uh, for game development. And in Windows Phone 8, you can have some access to the new, some of the new features and capabilities to leverage the, uh, those capabilities that are available on the new platform. You can also incorporate direct 3D graphics into a managed app. There's a drawing surface and a drawing surface uh, background grid control, which are now available. And you can use those to render your direct 3D graphics. And native developers will be very happy because they can develop 3D games using direct 3D and native code. Now the .NET API for Windows Phone is the primary managed API. It's what we're used to using uh, to develop apps with, a XAML UI interface and um, C Sharp or VB.NET is the code behind. The .NET API comes with the, all of the same system, all of the same namespaces and classes that you had in Windows Phone 7 and some additional uh, classes to leverage the features and capabilities available on Windows Phone 8. And you can see a list of, the, of some of them um, in the slide there. There's wallet, share media task, maps, and so on. Now the Windows Phone Runtime API is a subset of the full WinRT that's available on Windows 8. And this is exactly the reason why you can't just take a Windows Phone 8 app and run it on uh, Windows 8, because there are also some phone-specific features that are included in the WinRT, Win which allow you to leverage speech recognition, lock screen integration, personal information, and voice over IP, along with other things that aren't available in Windows 8. 
Uh, also note that HTML5 is n not an, a supported app model in Windows Phone 8 the way it is in Windows 8, but there is a workaround and we will discuss that in a little while. And for native, develop native code developers can access Win32 and COM API to access low-level networking functions and COM APIs. Um, so this is not something that we're really going to get into too much today, but just know that it is there and it is available for uh, you and your development models. Let's move on to talk about the app models that are available in Windows Phone 8. There are some differences compared to what was offered in Windows Phone 7. The traditional way is managed app development. This is designing your UI in a, with XAML markup and writing your code in either C Sharp or VB.net. All of the same APIs that were available in 7X versions are also available in 8.0 along with accessing the Windows Phone Runtime APIs, which is a new set of APIs that are available. So let's walk through a demo. To create a basic Windows Phone app uh, as a managed app, you'd simply go into Visual Studio and go File, New Project. And you can see that your Windows Phone templates are all available here and you have a variety of templates you can choose from. Uh, but in this case we can just say that we're going to create a basic Windows Phone app. Next you'll be prompted for the OS version. The reason that this is happening is because you can still continue to develop 7.1 um, Windows Phone apps that will run both on Windows 7X and Windows 8 devices. If we choose to the 8.0 OS it will only be supported on Windows Phone 8. And just like that, you've created a Windows Phone 8 project. Now, what I'm going to do is actually open one that I have already developed for the purposes of this demo and to preserve time. Okay, now that it's loaded, you can see that all I really did here was add a simple image and a button in my XAML markup. And I modified the title of the page and of the application. And in the code behind, I simply want to load a photo that I already have pre-selected and added to my solution. Um, so I have those under the assets folder here. There's just a handful of photos. So just for the purposes of this demonstration, I have it where it will just load the photo and I click a button and it'll keep going through the photos until it reaches the end. So let's see what that looks like. Sure is taking a while. All right, so as you can see, my app is loaded. The first app is in the window, or the first image is in the window. And I'm just clicking my button to just move through the images, and then I've reached the end. And that's how easy it is to develop a managed app in Windows Phone. Now, how many of you today that are watching um, have already developed apps for this Windows, for the Windows Phone platform, whether it be in 7X or for 8.0, and have already published apps to the store? Please enter your answers in the chat window, and I'd be interested to see um, how many of our, our, watchers to, our viewers today are actually um, Windows Phone developers. Or if this is, and if this, this is your first attempt at getting started, are there any questions that you have relevant to creating a new app or um, submitting your apps to the store? Feel free to enter those questions in the window as well. Moving on. So you can also develop uh, XNA games using managed code. Uh, there is an XNA framework available in the 7.1 OS. Um, the .NET APIs have not changed since the prior version of the Windows Phone OS release. 
Um, so you can only access the 7.1 APIs available when you're developing two-dimensional games using the XNA framework. But it is still available to you, and you can still create games in the same way that you would uh, have uh, done in previous versions in Visual Studio 2010. For new developers, note that when you are creating your project, instead of going to File, New Project, Windows Phone, you will have to look for the XNA Game Studio templates because it is in its own grouping. So if you're looking under the Windows Phone grouping for your XNA templates, you may get lost and confused. So just keep note that it is a separate uh, grouping of templates. Native code developers will be happy to know that they can develop 3D games using Direct 3D and native code behind. Um, so this will lend itself to a significant sharing of the code base with a PC-based version of the game. Um, as well, native code developers have access to the Windows Phone Runtime APIs just in the same way that managed code developers do. Um, and it makes it easier for them to share native components such as compute engines and graphic libraries and API sets. Managed app developers can also leverage Direct3D graphics in their apps. As I mentioned earlier, if you incorporate the drawing surface control and drawing surface background grid controls, you can render 3D graphics that were developed using the Direct 3D native library. So that lends itself to providing some powerful graphics capabilities even in your managed app. And finally, there's uh, the XML managed app development with it's a little bit of uh, native code involved. So you can include a native code project in your managed solution and access the, the APIs that you make available within that. Uh, this will just kind of allow you to access a little bit, a lot of the lower level functions of Win32 API, the COM APIs, um, and have that power of a native app, but within your managed app. Now, as I mentioned before, HTML5 app development is not supported in the same way that is supported in Windows 8. The workaround here is that you would have to actually render your HTML5 using the web browser control in your Windows Phone platform. Uh, because Windows Phone 8 ships with IE10, and ha which has full support for rendering HTML5, you essentially would render your HTML5 content, whether it be local-based uh, content on your phone or web-based content, within a web browser control. If you have JavaScript um, scripts that you want running, make sure you turn on the, the script notification in the web browser control so that it recognizes that and functions as expected. So let's walk through a demo of how to display HTML content. I'm just going to open up an existing HTML5 project. Now the main thing that I want you to notice here is the only thing that I'm displaying really in my UI is a web browser control. I don't have anything else going on aside from the, the application bar at the bottom. Um, but all that this, uh, this page is going to be made up of is what the web browser content is going to render. Also take note that I've turned on script because there will be some JavaScript running. Uh, and I've added code um, event handlers for loaded, navigation failed, and script notify. And in the code behind, there's not, it's not a lot uh, of code in there. It's, it's very light. As you can see, you're just handling the basic events that we uh, scripted for. And just na basic navigation through the application bar. And the HTML file that we'll be rendering is local in the, in the instance of this, um, this demo. And this is all it is. It's just going to display a simple calculator. So let's see how that looks in the emulator. Now, are there any app developers out there that have used um, HTML5 content uh, and, and leveraged the web browser control to display it? Oh, one second, it's not rendering at all. Why is that? One second. This was working yesterday. Of course it wouldn't work today, of course. All right, so what you would see here, and I don't understand why it's not working, 
is a full-on calculator with numbers that you can click and compute values. But it's clearly not going to work for me today just because that's the way my luck goes. <laughs> so we don't have time to debug this or understand what's going wrong. That's your job as a developer. Just know that you can do that, okay? And if there's any HTML5 developers out there that have some experience, if you want to lend any comments, I mean, you can see the code. Maybe, you know, let me know in the chat window what I'm doing wrong here. But other than that, we'll move right on. All right. Well, that was fun. Now let's talk about some of the new features that are available in Windows Phone 8. Tile templates and tile sizes. There are three types of tile templates that you can choose from. And there are three available sizes. So you can choose to design a flip tile, iconic tile, or cycle tile. You can only pick one of the three templates. You can't mix and match. There are three different tile sizes that are now supported. Small, medium, and wide tiles. Now the small and medium tiles you'll recognize um, from earlier versions of Windows Phone. The medium tile used to be considered the live tile, which would flip from back to front if you provided a secondary uh, background image for a second tile. Um, you also optionally have uh, the capability to create a wide tile. But note that when you, do, when you do choose this option, you will need to provide the graphics for it. So you can't submit your um, app to the App Store unless you have the sizes of the images that you plan to support. Small and medium um, size support is required. It's mandatory. Um, and wide, uh, wide sizes, um, you can choose to support them. You don't have to. But I think it lends itself to a nicer uh, feature for your users if you choose to, to support wide tiles. So just keep that in mind. Lock screen integration is now available. You can register your app as a lock screen provider. This means that you can um, set up your app to show a detailed status on, on the uh, lock screen for the user, as well as a quick status, and even set, set up what the background image is going to be. This doesn't mean that you can programmatically set the lock screen for the user. Uh, due to Windows Phone design principles, everything that is done on, the, on a user's phone is through user consent only. So even though you can enable your app to provide that feature for the user, it is ultimately the user's decision if they're going to select your app um, to provide that information or to be the lock screen background. There are also uh, new launchers available. Um, as in Windows, Pho um, Windows Phone 7, there were some launchers that made it easier to integrate um, to provide tight device integration in your phone and, and between your phone and your app. And, and that was a nice feature for users. Um, but you know, there, are, there are new features available, such as saving appointments, sharing media, uh, working with maps, uh, and things of that nature. So you'll want to explore those more in depth and see how they can um, enhance the, the allure and appeal of your app, I guess, to the, to the end users. Uh, a lot of that documentation is available on, at the Windows Phone Dev Center on how to implement those launchers. They're very easy to use, and there's a lot of examples online with sample code. Windows Phone 8 also has uh, maps integration. Unlike Windows Phone 7, uh, it's now using the Nokia maps, whereas in Windows Phone 7, uh, it was uh, powered by Bing's maps. This has been deprecated in Windows Phone 8. Um, in favor of the Nokia technology uh, maps, which provide faster rendering, different map modes, uh, and a, a bunch of new features that you can leverage. So you can really make any, uh, any apps that require navigation really look pretty smooth on Windows Phone. Location and location tracking is not something that's new to Windows Phone 8. It was provided in, uh, in the 7X versions. Uh, however, uh, there is a new location API available in the Windows Phone runtime. And the reason that this was done was to allow native, both native and managed code app developers to access the location uh, tracking APIs. Whereas, uh, uh, but the, the location tracking, sorry, but the location um, APIs are still alive and well in the .NET 7.1 API set as well. So you can use either or if you're a managed code developer, but ma native code developers will only be able to access them through the Windows Phone runtime. Speech recognition is now something that you can integrate into your apps uh, to provide a really uh, interactive and exciting experience for your end users. It's easy to implement. Uh, you can implement voice commands and speech recognition and text-to-speech all through the APIs. Again, there's a lot of examples online on how you can do this, so you might want to explore that a bit more. Wallet is now available in Windows Phone 8. 
this lends itself to various payment instruments and um, uh, allowing you to create apps that have provide membership deals, uh, you know, membership cards, you know, coupons, things like that, I believe. So uh, it's pretty sweet. I want to explore it more. I still haven't had a chance to really dig into it, but just know that it is there and it is a, a pretty neat feature that you can uh, include in your apps. It also uses NFC to support tap to pay, uh, a, a tap -to -pay feature, so it's pretty cool. Camera and photos, this is a big one, and I think a lot of people like to integrate the camera into their apps for various things, you know, food spotting and, I mean, Foursquare. There's so many, so many different apps I can think of that integrate a camera into the experience. Um, Windows Phone 8 provides a lenses application, which is a type of extensibility that is available for you to provide unique camera functionality uh, using the camera APIs. So this is something new to Windows Phone 8, and it's... Uh, allows you to create uh, really rich um, interactive applications using the Lenses application. As well, there are other uh, camera features that are available as listed on the screen. I'm not going to go through them all for the sake of time, uh, but just know that they are there. You can now integrate video chat and voice over IP chat uh, just through the APIs that are available. So just like all the other APIs, it is very easy to integrate into your app. Uh, incoming voice over IP calls work like any other call, and it integrates with your built-in phone features. This is available for all developers to use, so this is something that would also be neat to see how people implement that in their apps and why they would use it. Bluetooth and NFC are supported in Windows Phone 8. So with Blue, the Bluetooth API, you can enable app-to-app -app communication or app-to-device communication. And with the NFC API, you can also enable app-to-app -app connections using Bluetooth technology and also send data to between devices using NFC. In-app purchases are also supported on Windows Phone 8. You can use uh, this model to sell virtual content or even digital content to your users. Uh, Microsoft provides a commerce platform that allows you to uh, set up a pricing structure, which will be supported in 190 regions, I believe. Um, so, the API lends itself to, to make it very easy to provide in-app purchases to your user base. And like I said, yes, you can offer digital assets, um, whether they're, uh, you know, durables or consumables. There's different categories that are offered there. And that's it. Today we learned that Windows Phone 8 comes with a lot of new features that you can use to build really engaging and interactive apps for your, for your user base. As well, you learned about what the shared core means and how that there are many operating system components that are shared between Windows Phone 8 and Windows 8. We also learned about all the different app models that are available for Windows Phone 8 development and how it's up to you as a developer to decide which one suits your app development uh, best for the app that you're targeting. Uh, and also, uh, just keep in mind that Windows Phone 7 apps are not dead. They still run on Windows Phone 8 devices, and they can be upgraded without any modification whatsoever. They can be run as is as, without any modification whatsoever as well. So um, thank you for joining this session.